Welcome, welcome, welcome to the uh, PDX Tech Meetup. How many of you are brand new? This is the first time you've been to this meetup. Awesome sauce. Yay. Rock and roll. Hope you guys have a great time tonight. Please share with your friends. Let them know what a great time you had. And um, we're always, uh, always looking for awesome tech demonstrations. So if you go back to your um, your place at work and you guys happen to be working on some awesome tech, we would love to um, love to let the world know about what you're doing. Um, my name's Tup Ten. This is Manny. And it's Tupton. He is the founder and organizer of the PDX Tech Meetup. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's also CEO of We Post Media, the Startup Chronicle, formerly Startup Weekly, and of Pitchlandia. Pitchlandia rocks. Which is coming up soon, isn't it? May Memorial Day weekend. That's almost here, right? That's almost here. I'm old, so time goes really fast. You know, it's kind of like the Christmas thing. You know, they start bringing Christmas out right around Labor Day now, yeah. and so we can start celebrating pitch I'm buying stuff, stuff for Easter, Easter. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And this is Manny. He's our co-organizer, managing um, editor and CTO of Startup Chronicle, and he and I co-host the Startup Show, which is pretty. Which is produced locally here in Magazine. We have one listener. Somebody here. We have one listener. We have one listener. Our, which one is our listener? Who's our one listener? Right Thank now. you very much for listening. Thank you. To our podcast. The Startup Show. It's expletive laden. So I'm from Jersey. It is definitely not safe for work. <laughs> not safe for work. Do not blast it. Please. So you may notice that there's three co-organizers. Um, our third co-organizer is Tyler Philippi. And he has been participating in the Highway 1 Accelerator with his company Cargo. Um, and they are rocking it. They are in China right now. I imagine investigating manufacturing options. I have only been following on Facebook, um, but they have been just knee deep in accelerator awesomeness. So we expect him to be back um, in January and um, look forward to, to seeing him. You can follow what they're doing on, on Facebook on car cargo, 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 something like that. Cargo. Hopefully, he'll do a, um, a demo for us. Absolutely. Pitchlandia. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't know that they're they're pretty much beyond Pitchlandia. They raised two million dollars. Not quite. <laughs> not it's quite. a little bit beyond Pitchlandia tech. Okay, so welcome to the PDX Tech Meetup. Uh, so the PDX Tech Meetup is all about the community and getting to know people here in the tech community and opening it up to people who are not in the tech community. So you don't have to be a coder, even though there are plenty of us here. Uh, there are... No. That's interesting. It's Tyler stepping in. That's right. So, okay, good. That's technology for you there. So you don't have to be a coder or anything like that. There are lots of C-level executives here. There are people who are also looking for jobs and there are people who have jobs, so please network, make friends, this is your community. Um, if so, if you care about technology, like Jupin said, this community is for you. If you enjoy being around smart, fun, and creative people, like Jupin, <laughs> or some of our presenters this evening, uh, they're here and they're here for you to meet. So, um, and because we are Portland, we're very proud to be a very open, uh, community that shares resources uh, and ideas and things like that. So please connect and let's help each other out. So for those of you who have not noticed, there are a lot of companies in Portland that are hiring. It seems to be a constant problem with companies that they don't have enough staff people and they are hiring. So if you are in a company that's hiring and you are looking to hire people, maybe some of the geniuses who are here in this room, would you please stand up? Are you hiring? If you're hiring, stand up, okay? Now everybody who's looking for a job, look at these people. You know where to go, right? Who to go talk to. Okay, now you guys sit down. If you're looking for a job, please stand up. Everybody's, look, everybody's looking for a okay. job. All right, who's not, who's not, all right. I just got hired. So those of you who are hiring, please notice these people. Those of you who want to talk to. Um, and the perfect venue to talk about hiring and employment um, is the after party. The after party tonight is, as always, at the Thirsty Lion, just a couple blocks away. And um, we will talk about uh, that a little later. 
but um, that's a perfect place to do all the hiring and looking. Um, so we start our meetup with community announcements. So if you are someone with a, an event coming up, you have a meetup with an event coming up, um, or any kind of technology related announcement that you would like to make, this is not a place to hire people or make announcements that you're hiring that you should do by sponsoring the meetup. Sponsors can talk about hiring as much as they want. It's a plus. No. Um, do you want to give us yeah, money? So We'd like money. You know, 15, 15, 20 seconds, please keep it short so we don't impact the rest of the meetup, but um, community announcements. Hi there. Uh, my name is Ariane Holzhauer, and I am the executive director of Thai Oregon. Happy to be here for another uh, PDX Tech meetup. Um, we are an organization, not-for-profit, that fosters entrepreneurship. We're international, uh, we have uh, chapters all over the world, but we have a very active one here in Portland. And we've got a couple of cool events coming up if you're interested in uh, being an entrepreneur, meeting entrepreneurs, maybe connecting with sources of funding, uh, finding mentors for your business, and so on and so forth. Um, our upcoming event on Wednesday is a panel discussion about uh, healthcare IT. We've got some uh, heavy hitters from the healthcare tech community there. So if that's an interesting topic, then uh, come find us there. Or come to our Pitch Club event next week. Um, our uh, workshop is going to be about uh, making sure that your slide deck doesn't suck, which is always uh, helpful when you're trying to pitch for money with um, investors. And uh, Pitch Club is a regular event that will lead up to our Pitch Fest competition at the end of the year. Um, if all of this is a little bit much to retain, please come find me for more information or check us out on the web, oregon.tie.org, oregon.tie.org. Thank you. Uh, I run uh, PDX EdTech. It's a group that fosters businesses within the um, uh, educational technology space. We've got Ryan Carson, the CEO of Treehouse, coming and talking next week on Tuesday. So that's at uh, Northwest Lucky Labrador. You can look it up at meetup.com. Uh, it's PDX EdTech. Uh, again, that's on Tuesday at 6. See you. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Christian Perry. I run Startup Happy Hour and the Portland Startup Summit. Um, quick question, how many people here are working on a mobile app, um, either as a, in the concept stage or as an app developer, or who likes mobile? <laughs> okay, so this Thursday, um, I'm working with the App Developers Alliance out of Washington, D.C. Uh, they're coming to town to put together an event with eBay. Um, it's a three-hour afternoon workshop on optimization and engagement for your mobile app. It's completely free if you use the code PDX Tech when you register. Awesome code. Yeah. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to be moderating a panel with um, a bunch of cool people. The, the GM of eBay's Portland office is going to talk. And it ends just in time to make it to Startup Poker. Well, I am Lindsay Nelson. I am the co-founder and CEO of Theme Dragon. I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. Um, Theme Dragon has a very, very simple mission. We exist to help businesses succeed at video marketing. So in order to succeed at video marketing, you really need two things. You need great video content that really speaks directly to your customers, and you also need to measure that content to really understand whether it's actually working for you or not. So that's exactly what we do. We have two products. We have Theme Dragon, which is our first product. We create animated marketing videos with Theme Dragon. We also have Stat Dragon, which is a software as a service product we just launched last month. Stat Dragon helps uh, marketers understand what video content they have now, what's working, and how to improve it in the future. So I want to dive in for a moment just to tell you about Theme Dragon. So if you've ever created an explainer video, you understand that the price point's usually around $3,000 and you have you know, an eight-week turnaround time. At Theme Dragon, we actually have a $700 to $2,000 price point, and we give it to you in about 10 days. And the reason we're able to deliver it so quickly is because we start with animated templates. So if you go to our site, it looks a lot like this. You can browse our templates. You can find a theme that works for your company and your style. And you'll be presented with a customization portal. So here you can customize the script. 
you can choose a color scheme, you can upload your logo, you can upload video clips, photos, choose a voiceover artist, everything you need for that video to be really yours. Um, our team of real humans edits that video together. We deliver it to you in 10 days and we do revisions as well. So that's all pretty straightforward. But a lot of our customers already have video libraries and their big question is, okay, now what? What do I do to optimize my video content? It's sitting on my blog, it's sitting on my website, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, what do I do next? So that's why we created StatDragon. StatDragon pulls in the videos that a company has already created from YouTube, Vimeo, or Wistia. It doesn't matter who produced them, could be us, could be someone else. We pull them in and we score them uh, looking for dozens of different really important metrics around video marketing. So that could be SEO, that could be distribution, how are people engaging with that content on your social media platforms. We pull in that data and we give each video a score. That score is really important because suddenly we're quantifying what used to be just an asset that you really don't have any concept of you know, how valuable it is. It also gives you a baseline against which you can improve. So this is what the interface looks like for StatDragon. You can see all your videos are pulled in in the center there. Each one has a score. And if you click on one of those thumbnails, we drill down into uh, the key metrics for this video. We line item each of the metrics that we looked for and we tell you why you scored the way you did on SEO distribution and engagement. And that graph that you see right there, that's measuring engaged views. So you're all probably familiar with measuring views as the main metric for success in video, which is really a terrible metric to use because who knows who, who those views came from. If you have five views from your customer demographic and 5,000 from people who are not your customer demographic, those five are far, far more valuable. So what we're measuring is engaged views. These are views by your customer demographic and the percentage of time they actually watched the video. So if they only watched 80% of the way through, we're only counting that 80%. From there, we actually give actionable recommendations for how you can improve your video marketing now. So this is all about really connecting the dots between, hey, this is where you are now, this is where you need to be to really improve and get more out of your video marketing. These recommendations might be around something really small like for getting an SEO tag. It might be around something really big like, hey, you're missing content in this area of your funnel. So you know, create more tips and tricks, advice videos so that people understand uh, that you're out there and you can build brand awareness. So our ask, we uh, just launched this a month ago. We're pretty excited about it. We are looking for companies to partner with who already have a pretty robust video library who are looking to get more out of their video marketing. We want to work with them closely to understand what they value, build them new awesome features, and ultimately take over the world in video marketing. So that's our goal. And feel free to email me directly. Let's see if you can drag Three minutes for Q and A. Okay. Anybody have any questions? If we know yes. we have questions. For sure. When you consider your metric set for Stat Dragon, what's the distribution of metrics that you're sourcing in from those three platforms, and what percentage of your metric set is something that you're judging uh, on your own? Yeah. So good question. So we're pulling in metrics from the APIs of YouTube, Vimeo, and Wistia. And then we're forming kind of our own calculations from that. So right now, the main metrics that are really unique to us are the engaged views, which we're graphing monthly, daily, weekly, um, as well as share rates. So we're connecting to all social platforms, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, we're even doing Buffer, uh, StumbleUpon, and we're kind of helping you understand what the share rates for that video are. And we're also bringing in traffic sources. Um, where your video is being played back from on the internet. We're bringing in search terms. People are searching to find your video. So we're bringing down a lot of drill down information and sourcing it from a lot of different places to kind of put it in one convenient platform for you. <laughs> uh, what's the difference between a $700 video and a $2,000 video? That's a great question. <laughs> so there are tons of video producers all over the place. You can find videos on Fiverr for $5. You can find videos at, um, you know, video companies for $40,000. So the answer to that is, is kind of difficult. You're going to obviously get a difference in quality, uh, you know, depending on what you pay. Our goal at Theme Dragon is to give you the highest quality using a template, but still use humans so you get, like, a custom touch. So does, because, it, does, yeah. does it depend on the human that you get then? Um, so <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times, yes, but for us, What's happening is you're essentially giving us an order form. 
and you're saying, I want this, 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 and we're just kind of piecing it together. So there's not a huge question mark as to how it's actually going to look at the end of the day. You have a pretty good idea when you're on our site because you can see things, and it, we try to visualize it as best we can. People. I have a question. How granular can you get with your metrics? Uh, so, for example, could I have uh, tags for specific traffic sources with it, a specific individuals tagged? And could I get that granular with you to see if those individuals are actually watching my videos? That's a great question. And, and Jason, my co CTO, is the one who can probably answer that much better than I can. In most cases, you can't. But if you're using Wistia as your hosting provider, uh, you can actually send people links to videos in email and that will tie back to their email address and then they give you uh, data on how much of that video they watched if they click through it. So you can actually see whether they skipped the middle part of the video and rewatch the end. So Wisti is an awesome tool for getting more of that data on a specific person. Right, because you're actually paying for that. So next up is Dan Itkus from BioMeo. Hey folks. So Dan Hedkis from Biomeo. Well, I'm getting set up. Can I have a show of hands? How many people like passwords? <laughs> Yay! Nice. I work in security. Eight-digit passwords with special characters and numbers. I work in security. Awesome. <laughs> uh, how about keys? Huh? <laughs> how about electronic ID cards? <laughs> So Biomir is in business of uh, making the, all the logins biometric. Are you, are you familiar with what biometrics is? It's your face, it's your fingerprints, it's, it's your retina scans, it's your voice. Right, so we said, you know, everybody hates passwords. Why can't we use biometric? And it's not a simple problem to solve. There's, there's a lot of challenges that have to, to be overcome. Right, so you have to, obviously technology has to work, number one. Number two is not people aren't going to run out and buy specialized devices. So you got to make, make it work with what people already have. Number three is you got to make it easy for developers to integrate it. So this is an application, or this is a website, or a blog, or another piece of technology. You got to make it super easy for developers to integrate it. And number four is you got to make, you got you to get people to trust it. Because obviously, you know, giving up your fingerprint is not, uh, is not an easy thing to do. So over two years, past two years, we've been solving these difficult problems. And let me attempt a live demo right now. So this is an example, right? So you have a standard login, and you have a biometric login. So I'm using camera on, on my PC. So we had to, to tone the tolerance down, the threshold down a little bit, just to make it work with different light conditions. But we're doing a lot of things. We're doing combinations of biometrics because it's no no one biometric is reliable enough. You got to combine it together. Also depends if you're doing identification or you're doing verification. And you can do identification with the face and the verification with the fingerprint, for example. So there's a lot of things we're doing to make it really work. It's not a trivial problem, but we're well on our way to, 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 to getting it out there. My ask is we are rolling it out in beta, so if you're a developer and you want to participate in the beta program, please come talk to me. Uh, if you're a, uh, a channel company, a, a reseller, uh, please come talk to me because we want to get it in the enterprise. Um, yeah, so this is it. Then. My favorite slide. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Questions? Go ahead. Uh, what language is your API written in for developers? Uh, so it, it's uh, JavaScript. So it's very simple, couple lines of code that you just embed in your uh, web page or mobile. So you can work with Node and things like that. 
Yes, yes, yes. And we, we're, we're going to be rolling out OAuth uh, implementation as well. Yes. In order to do the fingerprint authentication from the camera, are you hashing um, like a unique signature based on the fingerprint, or are you actually storing the JPEG? Or oh, no, 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 we're definitely hashing. <laughs> In fact, we had to design a super special hash because it needs to be tolerant of losses. How doesn't a picture work as well as your fingerprint and her face? I'm sorry? If, if I got my phone to picture of someone's hand, do I use that picture on the smartphone to show the camera and have work as fingerprints? Uh, no, because, well, actually you could if we weren't doing things to prevent that. So what we're doing to prevent that is where we're doing dynamic challenges. So we tell you to, to smile or wink or hold the head in a certain direction or speak a certain phrase. So we're doing dynamic challenges to, to, to prevent. Anybody? Is there data to confirm the fingerprint and the fingerprint of the uh, false positives. Yeah. Yes, yes. So what we're returning is we're returning a score uh, to the developer, and the developer decides what to do with it, either to continue with a different biometric method so we can return a higher score, or this is good enough, depending on the application, or the application we can have. And depending on where in the application, this is a second factor, or this is a single sign-on, or this is a capture replacement, then you really need to you know, you can handle it very low. Uh, so Yes, so you tell us how, what, what the certainty you're trying to achieve, and we will kick in enough biometric methods to get you there. What kind of biometrics do you use in your communication? Fingerprint and... So fingerprint, face, voice, and we're, we're going to be uh, we're adding more and more. So we're going to be adding palm, we're going to be adding a heartbeat, so there's, there's a lot, lot more of that. Yes? Um, if the NSA wants a backdoor into your database, what's your response? <laughs> go, go at it. We don't, we don't store fingerprints. We store hashes. So, there's right? a, so is there a data concern or a security concern for any of this information you're collecting? Well, we took special measures not to make it a concern. Okay. So even if they subpoenaed us and we had to open it up, all they would get is hashes that it's irreversible. There's nothing they can do with it. Nice. Hello. Who's excited to talk about corporate training? All right. I'm trying to make it sexy, and that's what we're doing. Uh, so essentially, what Corsetto is is we're enabling anyone within a complex company or organization to create their own training courses. Because everyone, sometimes you have your massive company that they do all sorts of things. You have security guards, you have engineers, you have front desk staff. Everyone does things, and they all do things differently in different companies. Getting custom content into a trackable system, Bob took X on Y date, is a, a massive pain in the butt. So I've been doing this for about five years now, building big, massive systems for uh, companies like Window Worldwide and, and some other things. So instead, I saw an opportunity to make a SaaS platform out of this successful system. Essentially, that's Corsetto. So what we did is, yep, there's that. Uh, we enable anyone to build courses and we're really excited to integrate with other platforms. So like here's SoundCloud if anyone's familiar with it. You just click in the old piece and now you have your sound. And why does that matter? So we're very template based. If anyone's familiar with Squarespace, we're making it simpler to create courses via templates. So when you press this uh, plus button, you get these multiple templates. You can do video, you can do quizzes, you can do titles. Uh, let's just go ahead and click this little... Uh, Piece. So let's find our YouTube video that we like, copy the URL, stick it in, and now we have a beautiful YouTube video. So now we have our course that's somewhat built together. Maybe we should track whether or not someone's actually done it well enough. Uh, you can create quizzes. So you can create as many questions as you'd like and as many answers as you'd like. So it's all plug and play. The real goal is getting the subject matter experts, the people who know what they're doing, to create the courses. The old way is a company would go out, hire an outside agency, and then they would hire a developer, and the person who knows what the heck they're talking about uh, would then go and create the course. I've built uh, uh, space optimization courses for Starwood, which I have zero idea what that means, and the process of, of actually building that course and putting it into a trackable system was insane. 
So if someone forgot a comma somewhere, then we were talking like seriously uh, two grand and three weeks later to go back, get that dang comma in there, and re-put it into a trackable system. So what do I mean by trackable? Um, so this is pretty phenomenal in my book. Uh, what we did with Super 8 Hotels is that we had human resources at the top, and then we broke it down regional managers. A regional manager would log in, they would see their properties. A property manager would log in, and they would see their employees. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. So everyone just saw just their people, and everyone was in charge of getting their people to take their courses. Did my housekeepers take this course? Did uh, everyone take my sexual harassment course? And everyone was in charge. Instead of the old way, you have human resources at the top tracking hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of course records. What we did is we broke it down. You can create a tier just by clicking this little plus button, let's say Oregon. So now we've created Oregon, right? Now we can create, let's say, Portland. So now we can add users in Portland. Let's go, we can, depending on what authorization we want, we can take away whether their ability to create courses, they can invite other people, maybe they can uh, remove courses. You can add as many people as you'd like, and wherever they're at, now they're the managers of Oregon. So they can create tiers under them, and then they can put people inside of those tiers. So that person in charge of Oregon can create an Oregon course. And all the courses are dedicated just for the tier. So why that's cool is engineers can take engineering courses, salespeople can take sales courses, and then you can set it really simply to everybody. Hey, everyone has to take sexual harassment courses with a single click of a button. So that's pretty amazing if you ask me. Uh, and you do that, we're at the top. Um, so I did have to add, uh, since Simple is presenting tonight, we skinned it. We're very customizable. Simple is not a customer. Uh, my main focus was showing you why we believe in branding. So how you actually edit the course or the, uh, the piece. Uh, you click this little, any image within the system, you click the image. Uh, and then this is the asset library from in your uh, whole company. So HR can upload a logo, other people can then grab that logo. So you just click it, and now we have a nice pretty image. Everything is editable directly within, uh, and within customizing, you can change uh, your color scheme. Let's say red. Now our entire system is just turned to red. So you can fully customize the entire system depending on how you're looking. Uh, you can change your logo, your fonts, you have a custom login that you can go to that your employees will go in and they won't even know what that corsetto is. So, it's exciting. Uh, my asks are basically, we need people testing it. I, I've talked with Urban Airship, I've talked with uh, Puppet, I've talked with uh, uh, Compass, Crowd Compass. They're all using Excel spreadsheets, they have nothing. So, they're, we're just in the talks now, just seeing where we're heading. So, we need people to take action at this point. Questions? Uh, our deal is uh, in the 250 to 600 range. We're looking for companies that maybe f uh, three years ago they had 50 people and now they have 500 and it's like, shoot, we have to actually take onboarding seriously. I talked with Ryan Carson and he said that it takes almost three months to get someone to be actually productive. Say you have someone come in as a new hire, if your engineer is able to create five or six courses and you say, hey, you take your five or six courses, maybe they can be productive without bugging the engineer or just ask the quick little questions. So custom content to a trackable system and doing their sexual harassment, all the bull crap you have to take and check off, that's, that's what we're doing. Good. Uh, so do you have like marketplace for generic courses that could be used? I didn't even talk about that. If you know, if you're an expert in something, you can create a course and send it to the marketplace. Tara uh, Soma is the first one who sent one. But essentially when you uh, go into a course, let's say when you launch it, you can either launch it as testing, private, which is just your company, or send it to an open marketplace where you set a price and other companies can actually purchase that course. You can set it as free and they can have the course. And that's, that's the other ask. We need people creating courses, just flooding the market with uh, startups. So our big focus right now is, is high tech con uh, groups. Go ahead. There are other places that do online course type offerings. Is your main differentiator the ability for people to manage those under them and the sort of tree-like structure of delegated responsibility that you talked about with managers and sub-managers and people tracking you know, other people under them in this elaborate system, or is it the courses themselves? Definitely. Uh, our big differentiator, there's like 500 learning management systems. Uh, we blow them away with mobile, so that, that takes care of a huge percent of them. So everything is uh, mobile-first design uh, from the ground up.
the other thing we blow them away is customization. So Udemy is our biggest competitor, uh, but there's zero customization. Uh, everything I've done, it's, it's, we're, we're fostering a culture within a company. So branding, fonts, templates, all that is extremely important to a company to make sure that they're saying the right message and that uh, they're able to get their custom content into a platform. And we're interested in, I think our platform uh, to build the course is, is actually much simpler than Udemy. It's, it's literally just plug and play. And we're looking to build out our templates. So, and the other beauty with actually this plug and play thing is that it, people, we don't want designers building courses. We want subject matter experts building courses. So you literally just input stuff and we have complete control over mobile, which now we can resize everything the way we need it to. Go ahead. So if I want to do like a what's new or getting started app for my new software, is sure. that something I can use you guys for? Sure. Yeah. Have you explored that or is something? Uh, the customer facing is, is a big deal. Joint uh, is another provider that is looking to use our platform for customers to say, what the heck is Manta? Are you guys still looking for, for uh, beta tests for that too, for like a getting started? Sure. Anyone using our uh, course building software that can tell us, hey, this is great, but this sucks, we want those okay. people doing that. Cool. Awesome. Corsetto. Thank you. So, uh, my name is Michael, and this is Tad. We are two mobile engineers at Simple. Um, I do iOS, and Tad does Android. And um, for those of you who don't know, Simple, we are a technology company focused on mobile banking, and we have a web component as well. So um, a lot of people say, well, you, you, know, you work at a bank. And aside from not wanting to say that I work at a bank, um, in reality, we're not a bank. Um, we are, oh, I'm sorry. We're not, we are we're not a bank. A, <laughs> I can't read from there. We're not a bank. We're a technology company focused on banking. So we're not a bank first that just happened to create a mobile interface. We started with a mobile interface um, and applied it to banking. And so this gives us several advantages. So our first mission is to change your relationship with your finances. Um, Simple is focused on personal finances. That's what we did first, and uh, that's our sole offering at this moment. And we do this through several ways. How are you going to improve your relationship with your finances? Um, and we believe mobile is a phenomenal way to change the relationship with your finances. Mobile offers a lot of benefits that traditional banking and websites don't necessarily offer. So one is real time. You always have your phone on you. Traditionally, you get your statements once a month, and if you're really diligent, you'd look through those statements and maybe you kept some receipts, you try to reconcile them. Um, I think most of us probably didn't do that. Um, it's personal. You always have your phone on you. You get a push notification the instant you swipe your card. Literally the instant. A lot of our customers say that you get a push notification before the teller hands, hands back the card. Um, so most of our customers forego receipts now because you're getting an instant notification. Um, but mobile also allows us to give a great experience. Um, we do not, a lot of mobile applications, they will develop once and deploy to both Android and iOS. We have a dedicated team um, for Android and we have a dedicated team for iOS. A very small team, but um, we take each platform's strengths very seriously. And um, we don't want to be the best mobile banking app. We want to be one of the best apps that happens to do banking. We will give you a demo. Hopefully it'll work. Um, and uh, the reason, the things that we allow you to do, uh, the reason we add those capabilities is we, we think your money tells a story. You know, you, money is involved in almost every aspect of your life. You use it to save up for buying a home, for adopting a dog. Um, and it's important to keep track of your finances and understand so you can have control of them and to be able to do the things that you want to do. So this leads us to our demo. Get the simulator running. Yeah, it is. Sorry, we weren't prepared for a 640 by 480 today.
Is that kind of like the Spanish Inquisition, right? Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the low resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think we have okay. a hand phone here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're going to tell a story with some money. Um, the story we're going to tell is uh, my friend Michael here. He's not from around here. So uh, uh, he hasn't seen a lot of uh, the beauty of Oregon. So I was going to show him to uh, Crater Lake. And uh, so I figured I was going to come up with a budget for this. And the way we do that in simple is uh, we create a goal. Uh, and then what a goal does, it, it just lets you set aside money. Um, uh, a specific amount for a certain amount of time. Um, so I'll just type in a Crater Lake Vacation. Of course, I can't see the bottom of the screen, so I won't be able to see. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. Can you change the orientation of the signal? There you go. <laughs> I think that's a fun <laughs> joke. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. I'm going to need a car rental. What? We're going to need some gas. We're going to need some food. We're going to need a campsite for a few nights. So uh, let's do uh, 250 bucks. See if uh, this will work. <laughs> So, uh, if everyone can turn their heads in 90 degrees. <laughs> you can see that I can actually uh, set this aside over time. So, we can, we can save a, uh, about 8 bucks a day, and I'll be guaranteed to have 250 bucks by November 18th. We'll say that's our uh, camping trip. I think Crater Lake will be closed after the <laughs> This is all fake. <laughs> okay, this is me re-logging in, yeah. Because uh, the Android emulator is the worst in the world. <laughs> so cool. Um, I'm going to put some money in this bowl just to simulate uh, it filling up over time. Do you want to bring that back up? Yeah, okay. so we've got my screen here, <laughs> and we're going to try another connection. So this is coming from the iOS app. That was Android before, and you see that it fit in on the Android platform and our iOS app. Um, so one of the features that we added, um, which is really convenient for demos, is 1Password integration. So we can pull up 1Password, and uh, I happen to have Tad's password stored in one password. <laughs> so we're going to sign in um, with Tad's password, and uh, you can create a unlock code from here. And then one of the things uh, we also built in is Touch ID, so you can log into your bank with Touch ID. That works pretty well. Um, so we're going to go to goals, and here's the Crater Lake vacation, and you can transfer in. <laughs> So we're going to do, let's say, this is my actual money. Um, <laughs> okay, so yes, uh, apparently I need to save more. Uh, $240 in there. Um, so much of a trust that we can do with that now. Okay, so um, as you see, the amount saved per day is updated now that we have a, a bunch of money in there. It's only until, what, November 19th it was? Mm -hmm. So it's only going to be 34 cents a day, which I think we could do. Um, so if we go back to the transaction list, uh, fast forward one month. This is after November 19th. So we went on the trip. Mm -hmm. So cool. Uh, I can go into each one of these transactions now. I can attach photos, documents. I can uh, add a memo. So this rent a car, uh, the car was smelly. So I'll just uh, type in smelly car. That way I know I'm never going to go there again. Um, Let's see, this quick stop transaction came through as unknown. Sometimes uh, companies just do that. So I'll just uh, categorize it as a snack. And uh, oftentimes I like to attach a photo to our uh, to a transaction. So for example, this Crater Lake campground transaction. 
have a nice beautiful photo of uh, Crater Lake here. This way I can uh, come back into my symbol app anytime and see uh, exactly what I spent this money on. So yeah. Yeah, so that's just one of our features is goals, uh, which a lot of our customers make use of. But as I said before, we're trying to take advantage of the, the platform advantages that both Android and iOS offer. So uh, we had a big update 2.0 for both platforms. Um, Android added Android Wear support, iOS added Touch ID, 1Password, um, and uh, this is a great, the 2.0 is a great platform for us to be building on, and we're not stopping, so. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Uh, two questions. So I know on the online web app you have the capability to look at where your card was swiped on the map. And yeah. Why isn't that an iOS or any of the mobile platforms? It yeah. is in iOS. It is. So um, do you have uh, um, like GPS on any of these transactions? No. Okay. So. <laughs> um, well, I mean, we're, we're like, I like looking at the, oh, well, I just like looking at the map view and seeing all of the different ones to the... Okay, oh, so that, that's a different game. feature. Um, so uh, that's what we call reports. It's available on the web because they uh, actually download all of your transactions when you open the web app. And we don't want to do that on mobile. So. Uh, the second question I have is, you add two photos to like one transaction, like if you take your picture of Crater Lake and like, you also take a picture of like, where you purchased a bunch of food at a restaurant, take a picture of that receipt and upload it that way? Uh, currently, no. Um, you can attach, at least on the Android app, you can attach a photo and a document. If you like, you can make a PDF with like a million photos. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's something we're very proud of. Maybe that's in money. Oh, uh, that's, a, that's a really good question, actually. So, um, was it uh, in the 80s with deregulation? Uh, pr prior to that, banks made money in two ways. One, um, they, would ha they would have a differential interest rate. And so by having a large amount of holdings, they would get a better interest rate from um, investing their money. And they would give out to their customers a lesser interest rate, and so they'd make money on the difference. So that's one way. The other way is that uh, the Visa network, the MasterCard network, um, they'll give the banks money uh, every time you swipe your card. Um, a, a very small amount, but that adds up with a lot of swipes. Um, so those are the two ways, traditionally, that banks make money. But with the deregulation, banks started um, charging overages and doing things like that. Um, there's, there's a lot of details. If you're interested in uh, a lot of weird ways that banks make money, feel free to talk to us afterwards. But we, are, uh, we take pride, and we're founded on the idea that we're only going to make money in those two traditional ways. <laughs>